Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Brian, and today I'm going to be giving you a first impression on Roll and Write Game 7 Bridges. So let's go to the table. I'll explain how some of the mechanics work, and then I'll come back here and tell you what I think about the game. Okay, this is Seven Bridges, and this is a roll and write game, so every player is going to have their own sheet that looks like this. Every player is going to take one of these colored pencils that they'll use to fill in the writing part of the game. And then there'll be these dice which players will be drafting. So at the beginning of a round, the dice will be rolled, and then players will choose between these different faces to draft from. Um, if you get one of these threes or these twos, it basically allows you to draw a straight line two to three, you know, two or three squares long. This will allow you to draw a corner piece. Uh, this gets allows you to draw a whole cross, and these will allow you to draw, you know, little sections of a of a inside a square. Which sometimes it's good because it allows you to make a right turn if you need to do that. Um, and then. Players are just going to draw on their maps based on what they've drafted each time. There are also these little uh, bonus squares. So whenever you pass a landmark, which are the kind of little numbered areas, there are numbered or there are landmarks on the map. The idea being that the map represents the city of Königsberg, and it is somewhat uh, cartographically correct, I believe. <laughs> um, so whenever you pass a landmark, you will get to take one of these bonuses. Some of the bonuses down here will let you do something later, they'll let you do a reroll. If you take one of the ones up here, it just allows you immediately to draw that thing on your map as well. And then as far as scoring goes, there are seven different ways that you can score at the end of the game. For the bridges, you'll just score a point for every one of the bridges that you cross. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bridges in the game, hence the name. For this one, you'll score for every one of those landmarks you pass. These are the same things that give you the bonuses. For buildings, uh, it may be hard to see with the scale here, but there are all of these buildings. A lot of them are kind of like subdivided. Like this is a building. This, this long one is one building. But every building you've walked by, at least in part, will count for your building score. Uh, trees, every time you've passed trees. So sometimes there's lines of trees. Sometimes there's trees here. This is a little... Kind of an oddity because this is a building filled with trees so in order to get credit for all nine of these trees in here you have to have gone around the building completely but every other tree you're just getting a point for it if you've passed it now this one the map squares occasionally you may draw a line that hits the edge of the map and when you do there's a number there so you'll circle all these numbers that you've touched you'll add them up and that will be your map square and then last of all, for drafting, these are for the bonuses. So for the bonuses that you've scored, you'll also, there's a number associated with it. You'll score that number and that will be your drafting bonus. So you're gonna end up with seven numbers here. However, you can only use a number for every bridge that you've gone over. So if you've happened to go over seven bridges, you'll be able to add up every single one of these numbers. That's unlikely. And I think if you really did try to cross every one of these seven bridges, then some of these scores may be very, very, very low because it's hard to do everything in this game. So generally, you might want to try to cross maybe five bridges and then focus on those five things because two of them won't count. You only get to count uh, each thing for each bridge that you cross. So you basically just exclude your lowest points for each category. You'll get a total number here, and that's your score. I should also mention that the bridges crossed and the landmarks don't score one for one for each thing but as you do them you'll be filling out these bars here and what however far you fill along that bar that will be the point that you'll get that you'll put in there this is a little bit difficult for me because i don't really want to pan a game but i'm kind of going to do that with seven bridges uh, this should be sort of an easy win for us because my fiance Kristen is german the game is you know, based on a map of Königsberg, and she almost was an architect, so she has that in her as well. So part of the reason that I got this game from the Kickstarter is I thought it would really appeal to her, and I didn't have any uh, roll and write games in my collection. Now, I've played Cartographers, which I think is fantastic, and I've played uh, 
Welcome to, which I also think is fantastic. I guess that's really more of a, a flip and write game because you're not rolling dice, you're flipping cards. But both of those games are really fun and really neat. And just what's happening with kind of the art in that game and the iconography and the graphic design of them and the gameplay itself, everything about it is really fun. It's really engaging. And I would recommend that you go out and pick up either one of those if you are looking for a good roll and write game. I also hear the Railroad Inc. series is really good. I haven't played those. And then there's also, uh, what, Twice as Clever, and that's pretty clever. Those are supposed to be good as, as well. I have several problems with uh, Seven Bridges. Um, first is that it, it feels cheaply produced. It, it, it's, it's, not, it's not well produced. <laughs> the colored pencils that come with it don't write very well. There's no pencil sharpener. And, you know, for something that's, I don't think it would have hurt them to put in a cheap, like, 29-cent pencil sharpener. I don't know if it would have made that that much of a difference because the pencils feel pretty cheap and they don't write well anyway. And when you're making a game like this and there, there just there aren't that many components involved, I mean, all there is are the dice and the little disposable player sheets and the pencils. That's it. It's not that hard to have fairly decent components when you don't have that many components. Yet, the quality of the pencils is pretty terrible. Um, the dice, I guess they're supposed to look maybe thematic in a way because they're wooden and so there's supposed to be some element of like, they feel crafty or something, which is supposed to go along with the whole, uh, you know, architectural, you know, drafting theme. But I'm not a fan of the dice. They're fine. I'm not a huge fan of them. But the player sheets are problematic too. You know, everything on that sheet that you're filling out it's just, it's kind of confusing when you look at it. I mean, I'm not confused by it because I've read the directions and I understand it. So it's not that I'm confused by it. But I think when you're looking at it, it, it just doesn't pop very well. It's confusing to look at. And I think if you're playing with new players, they're going to have a lot of questions about it, which could be very clear to them if it was better designed and if the iconography was, was better. Also, some of the dice and, and the way that the dice create movement you know this kind of the three and the two movement or the little dice that kind of have has the the half a movement it just nothing about it feels very intuitive and this is a lighter game it should be intuitive but it doesn't feel intuitive it feels like in playing it there are going to be a lot of tiny little questions that don't really need to be there um, there's also the fact that I don't know, the way that the kind of bonuses are aligned or the way, you know, certain other things are on the bottom of the player sheet, like with the, when you're crossing the bridges or the, the landmarks, the way you kind of fill out a bar, everything just feels a little non-intuitive and more confusing than it needs to be. Um, once you get past that hump, it's fine. You're, you're fine with that. But the game just also doesn't feel very fun to play. It doesn't feel like it's compelling gameplay to me. It, 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 there was no sense of joy playing this game that I've had from the other roll and write games that I've played. In fact, you know, we've played it once, which maybe I shouldn't be, you know, rushing to a judgment so quickly, but I also don't really need to play games multiple times that I don't like. And, you know, neither me or my fiance, Kristen, really want to play this game again. So it's going to be sold very quickly. But from one person, this person, my opinion is that you should go find another roll and write game and not bother with this one. If, however, you know, you, you saw what I showed you when we were down on the table and you saw the sheet and it looked compelling to you and you don't have any problems with it, even after what I've said, then maybe you'll still enjoy it. But I think for most people, go play Welcome To, go play Cartographers, maybe Railroad Inc., but maybe you want to skip this one. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you're new to the channel, please remember to like and subscribe. And if you'd like to be notified whenever I publish future videos, and there are going to be a lot of these first impressions videos coming, uh, then you can also hit the alarm bell. So thank you again, and I'll see you in the next video.